Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new video. Today I wanted to go over some account goals for free to play. Now I know free to play is inherently very limited. However, having goals for free to play accounts can really help people stick around in the game and plan for when they get membership down the road. I have put together eight goals that you should have as a free to play account. Now these goals are mostly pertaining to increasing the effectiveness of your free to play gameplay. However, some of them might be requirements for members content that you might interact with down the road. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoy and let's get started. Coming in at number one is one of the more obvious ones, but it does make it less important. And that is completing all of the free to play quests. So to begin with here, some of the free to play quests will give you a ton of experience and some pretty important skills. To begin with here, by completing the Vampire Slayer quest, you're gonna get 4.8K attack experience and you can do this quest at level 1, meaning you can get these early attack levels completed very easily. On top of that, there is the Knight's Sword quest, which gives you 12.7k smithing experience, which can get you from levels 1 to 29 without ever training your smithing skill. We have Doric's quest, which gives you 1 to 10 mining pretty much instantaneously. It's like the quickest quest in the game. And of course, we have Dragon Slayer, which is going to give you 18.6k strength and defense experience, which will give you a ton of levels in both of those skills. Now on top of that, free to play quests are quite often a requirement for completing members quests, so having them out of the way uh, before you go to membership will help save you a lot of time, especially if you bought a bond and you have a limited amount of time to play members content. And finally, free to play quests provide quite a lot of quest points, and quest point totals are required for some members content, including the slayer skill, as well as a very important quest in pay to play. Coming in at number 2 is completing the Stronghold of Security. The Stronghold of Security is very important for free to play accounts. To begin with here you will get a free 10,000 GP by completing it which can be very useful early on. However more importantly it unlocks uh, quick travel between all of the levels of the dungeon and there are quite a lot of high level free to play monsters in the Stronghold. And by completing the Stronghold of Security you will unlock the best free to play melee boots in the game, which are the fancy boots or the fighting boots. Another important part of the stronghold of security is that it will help set up your account security like authenticator. You will need to get the authenticator hooked up on your account to get these boots. And more important than the boots are probably actually having the authenticator. Having proper account security it should be a goal for anyone free to play or membership. Coming in at number three is acquiring a max set of free to play melee gear. Now the best in slot gear for melee and free to play consists of full rune armor, a rune weapon, an amulet of power, uh, the stronghold of security melee boots, as well as a team cape. To equip a rune scimitar, which is the best melee weapon in free to play, you will need 40 attack. To equip all of the rune armor, you will need 40 defense, and that is the only skill requirements you will need. The easiest way to acquire an amulet of power is just on the grand exchange. The fancy boots are acquired through completing the Stronghold of Security, which was the last goal. And last up here is the Team Cape. It is the best in slot cape for melee. It's not going to make a huge impact, so it's not that important that you get it, but they're pretty easy to acquire. Altogether, if you bought all this on the Grand Exchange, it would cost you about 150,000 GP, which is a pretty solid early game goal to go for. Coming in at number 4 is acquiring a base 20, 30, or 40 in all of your free-to-play stats. Now when they say something like base 20, it means that your lowest level free-to-play stat is at least 20. Or your lowest level free-to-play stat is at least 30. This is a very common tactic to leveling up your skills to try to add variety to what you're training and just maybe train skills that you never would have before. Before you get to membership, there is no reason why you can't have gotten at least level 20 in all of your free-to-play stats. Not only will it be useful for when you are free-to-play because your stats will be higher up, you'll have quest requirements already completed, other skilling methods that are available and pay-to-play will already be unlocked, you don't have to do the free-to-play ones, but it will also give you some practice on what the skill is about, what are the main items you need to train it, and so forth. I'm just going to take a second here now to rank each skill from what I deem the most important to level up before you get to membership and what is the least important. There's a couple factors here, one being that if there is a much better way to train it in pay to play, I'm going to put it lower on the list because it's just a waste to do in free to play, even if the skill itself is still useful. So I would say what some of the most important skills to train are your gathering skills. Now one of the main points for that is that Fishing, woodcutting, and mining are trained in almost the exact same way in the early levels. So going from 1 to 30 mining in pay to play is not much different than going from 1 to 30 mining in free to play. The methods are the same, so it will not take you any longer to level that up 
in the early levels in free to play. The next most important would be stuff like attack, strength, defense. While they will be quicker to train up in pay to play, the first 30 or 40 levels are not going to be that much different. The one big difference here is there are some quests in pay to play that will level you up quite quickly. The next most important would be magic. Magic has a ton of uses in pay to play. Not only does it unlock teleports, money making methods, um, some of the best training rates in the game, but is used for a ton of quests and so forth. In the first 30 or 40 levels of magic, you can train in a pretty similar way in free to play as you would in pay to play. Next up is ranged. Ranged is very slow to train in the beginning in free to play or pay to play, but the range skill is very important to get leveled up. However, it will be quite a bit quicker in pay to play, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't train it. Next up is your production skills like smithing, crafting, and cooking. While they are trained in a similar fashion to pay to play in the first few levels, there are going to be better methods in pay to play to level them up quicker and there will be quests. But that being said, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to get 30 or 40 in free to play beforehand. And the least important skills I would say to level up in free to play are going to be fire making, rune crafting, and prayer. Now, prayer is going to be very useful in both game modes. However, leveling up prayer in free to play is very slow. Doing it in membership will be four times quicker and will cost you the same amount. So I'd recommend leaving that for last unless you really plan on being in free to play for a long time because getting to 43 prayer will unlock all of the protection skills which are going to be very important for both game modes. Coming in at number five is acquiring the best in slot ranged gear that you can get. Now the skill requirements for this are going to be 40 ranged as well as 40 defense. What you will need this for is the green dehyde body, chaps, and van braces. An additional requirement for the green dehyde body is going to be the completion of the dragon slayer quest. You will not be able to equip it otherwise. Now the rest of the best in slot gear is going to be a coif, a maple shortbow, an amulet of power, uh, any cape, a green cape or black cape will do, leather boots as well as adamant arrows. And of course you will need 40 range which is going to be the hardest requirement to get. Leveling up range is going to be slow in both game modes. However getting 40 range is a very good base to have for pay to play content. Coming in at number 6 is Killing Obor or Briofita. Uh, for those who don't know, these are two bosses that are available to kill in free to play. The only way to fight them is by killing hill giants or moss giants and acquiring a mossy key or a giant key. They have a drop rate of about 1 in 150 or if you're killing them in the wilderness 1 in 75. Now this is more just for fun and it is something to kind of complete free to play is killing one of the free to play bosses. They are pretty easy to kill however you will need access to the protection prayers you will need to protect from magic for Briofita which is unlocked at level 37 and you will need protect from ranged for Obor which is unlocked at level 40 prayer. As I mentioned earlier leveling up prayer in free to play is very slow. You can only bury bones or big bones. However if you have a bit of extra money and you want to get to maybe 37 prayer or 40 prayer that should only cost you maybe a couple hundred thousand GP and it is kind of the end game for free to play content. It is going to be the hardest monster to kill except for maybe Elvarg in the quest and their drops are actually quite good. The most expensive weapon in free to play is the giant club which is around 1 million GP each and there is a chance that you get that from killing Obor which is an awesome free to play goal to go for. Coming in at number 7 is achieving 55 magic. Now getting to level 55 magic in free to play is totally possible. There are quite a few methods that can get you decent experience in free to play. One of the easiest ones is just fire striking everything you see and you will level up your magic pretty consistently and pretty quickly. At level 55 magic you will unlock the high alchemy spell which is going to be useful if you're an Iron Man, as well as it's just a useful spell to have for both game modes. On top of that, you will unlock quite a few teleport spells. And unlocking these teleports are going to be extremely useful. So at level 25, you're going to get the Varrock teleport. At level 31, you will get the Lumbridge teleport. And at level 37, you get the Falador teleport. Those are all of the free-to-play teleports. However, at level 40, you can teleport to your house, which is a members-only item. At level 45, you can teleport to Camelot, which is very important because getting to the west side of the map can take quite a while. And at level 51, you unlock the Ardoin teleport. There are higher level teleports, but those are the most important and standard teleports uh, for membership. On top of that, there are a ton of other utility, combat, and teleport spells that you unlock between 1 and 55 magic. And just getting a higher and higher magic level is, is going to benefit you a lot when you go to membership. And the final goal on the list is, of course, acquiring a bond. Now this is probably the most important goal for any free to play account and it's kind of the whole purpose of this video. A bond is an in-game item that gives you 14 days of membership when you redeem it. You can buy it on the Grand Exchange for in-game currency for about 3 to 4 million GP. It is a lot for free to play but it is an awesome goal 
to go for if you just want to train up your skills in free to play, enjoy the free to play game mode, but eventually work towards uh, getting membership. Because it is entirely possible that once you get membership, you can sustain that by playing a regular game and just earning GP in the game. I am currently working on a three part series on how to get from a brand new free to play account to a bond, and I'll leave a link in the description for that. Oh shit, they're up to 3.8 mil. Okay, no, it's probably gonna be a four part series. <laughs> anyway guys, that is pretty much it for the video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask anything in the comment section. If you're looking for another way to support the channel, I will leave a link to my Patreon in the description and an end card at the end of the video. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and I will see you next time.